9. Petak Island Prison Petak Island Prison, situated on an isle in Novozero Lake, shelters some of the most violent criminals in all of Russia. The convicts spend roughly 22.5 hours confined in a cramped two-person cell. While you might assume the remaining hour to be dedicated to recreational activities or exercise, it may come as a surprise that for that last hour, they are locked in cages. Its reputation comes from the absolute loneliness and isolation that have driven some of its toughest convicts to madness. Less than 200 Russian criminals are now serving life in prison after the death sentence was scrapped out for good. The institution is so isolated that convicts need to be transported for hours through abandoned towns and the woodlands of the Vologda area before being transferred by boats to the isle. Now that's a level of security and confinement. The bathroom is a steel pail, and their bedding is just a plank of wooden board. Tuberculosis is a widespread ailment among convicts, and those who die are cremated in a neighboring hamlet, with just a number plate designating their grave. Considering such terrible living conditions, psychological issues are inevitable. The inmates receive no education, they are given only two brief visits a year, and are denied any hygiene-related amenities. The threats here don't stem from rebellious inmates, guard aggression, escapes, violence, or sexual assault. The threats are entirely in the imagination of the inmates. 8. La Sabaneta Prison while you might expect a prison to be controlled by the National Ministry of Prison Systems, there's a prison in Venezuela controlled by its prisoners themselves. Yes, you heard that right. In what could be named one of the most notorious prisons in the world, the La Sabaneta prison is controlled by gang lords serving their time inside. The jail premises were built to hold approximately 15,000 convicts, but guess how many are actually in there? 25,000 of them. The prison is grossly overcrowded and equally understaffed. In 2012, the prison was said to have as few as eight wardens and 32 guards posted on duty. If you do the math, it adds up to 780 convicts versus one guard. Seriously? Lack of security led to a steep rise in gang fights, resulting in some of the most brutal outbursts of violence ever recorded, the most ruthless of which sparked from a deadly gun duel in 1994 that eventually led to the killing of 150 inmates. A group of inmates had started a fire and mercilessly killed anyone who tried to escape. This massacre is deemed one of the deadliest prison incidents to date. The number of casualties shot up as prison guards tried to gain control of the situation. Such riots were a regular affair within the dreaded and deteriorating walls of the cramped up prison. The living conditions within the prison weren't great either. Due to the lack of space, the prisoners were compelled to string up a swarm of hammocks above each other in their congested 8 by 12 square feet quarters to ensure room for sleeping. As for the others, they just crashed on the ground, elbow to elbow. Inmates bathed from the same water container placed in a corner and relieved themselves into bags tossed out of a barred window into an open-air patio. Imagine the stench of human waste. Within the walls of La Sabaneta, it's a daily fight for survival. The only source of drinking water was from a rusted laboratory pipe, which would be grimly infested with germs and parasites. Under such adverse conditions, medical care for the wounded or diseased isn't common. Convicts are left to sow their own injuries and heal themselves amid poor, unhygienic conditions, devoid of painkillers or antibiotics. Government-run raids would yield anything from drugs to weapons to even endangered animals being held captive. Be it Coca-Cola or cocaine, pretty much anything could be smuggled in. A riot broke out in 2013 and killed 16 inmates. 
This led to the closing of the prison gates forever. The last prison lord to take charge, Mosho Edwin, a gang leader, refused to leave his newfound kingdom. Today there are talks of converting the prison into a museum to showcase one of the most corrupt prison systems in the world. 7. ADX Florence Dubbed as the Alcatraz of the Rockies, the ADX Supermax Control Unit is meant to house the worst convicts in the United States. It accommodates 336 male inmates and is under 24-hour surveillance. Since 1994, this prison has been harboring some of the world's most dangerous criminals, including El Chapo Guzman, the famous drug lord. He escaped from a high-security facility in Mexico in the year 2015. He managed to escape through an underground tunnel that was more than one kilometer long. But ADX Florence isn't as easy to escape from and has been his home ever since his recapture. Inside the walls of this prison are offenders of assaults, spies, scammers, among many other crimes. It also holds several terrorists responsible for the 9-11 attacks on the Twin Towers. Robert Hansen is also a prisoner here. Hansen is recognized for being the worst spy in the history of the United States for his stint of providing intelligence to the USSR despite being an FBI agent for more than 20 years. No one has escaped. It is regarded as the safest jail in the world. Prisoners spend almost 24 hours a day imprisoned in their cells. They only get nine hours outside per week, sometimes less depending on behavior. They're let out one at a time into an outside cell or a concrete pit that's barely 10 steps long. Even the patio has a construction that replicates a cage. Despite the stunning location in the heart of the Rockies, the prisoners can't peek outside and enjoy their surroundings. The windows are so tiny that they barely allow any amount of light. Once inside, the prisoners tend to lose orientation of where they are placed. Prisoner cells are built with advanced monitoring equipment, controlled remotely by the guards. Even the lights and shower are controlled remotely. The whole prison is set up with gun turrets and laser beams that ensure the area's safety 24-7. There are reports of prisoners who confess that it's better to receive capital punishment than to be sentenced to life in the ADX, so much so that it has driven eight inmates to suicide. In 2012, a complaint was filed by prisoners who say the conditions within the prison are simply inhumane. The complaint argues that the circumstances within the institution's walls create an atmosphere that drives the inmates to torture and abuse. 6. Tadmore Prison The Tadmore Military Prison, located in Palmyra, Syria, gained recognition worldwide when Amnesty International, a global movement that campaigns against abuse and for human rights, asserted that every aspect of it was designed to dehumanize its inhabitants. Tadmore Prison holds the worst reputation for being synonymous with torture, madness, horror, and death. The episode responsible for this prison's notorious past is when the president of the state, Hafez al-Assad, escaped an assault on his life by the Muslim Brotherhood in 1980. It was stated that he instructed his troops to execute any prisoner inside as a means of getting vengeance for the assault on him. A Palestinian writer jailed for two years for voting against the leader once said, It's utterly unfair to call it a prison. In prison, you have basic rights. But in Talmor, you have nothing. Another prisoner added that they were not even allowed to make eye contact. With torture lurking around the corner at all times, most prisoners were left to die from random deadly blows, eye gouging, crushed fingers, and limbs. The brutality, torture, and terrible treatment behind the walls of this institution have awarded it an infamous history that cannot be easily forgotten. On June 27, 1980, defending soldiers killed an estimated 1,000 captives in one day. 
Tadmore was closed in 2001 but reopened in 2011. The brutality continued until finally in May 2015, the ISIL, the Islamic State of Iraq, and the Levant took over the prison and demolished the building. However, the terrifying tales continue to live on. 5. The Penitentiary of New Mexico Commonly known as PNM, the Penitentiary of New Mexico is a men's optimum security correction facility known to be a house of riots. The Supermax facility is located approximately 15 miles south of metropolitan Santa Fe. Offenders are classified based on a level system centered upon behavior rating step programs wherein additional privileges are offered for inmates who exhibit proper conduct for a specified duration. So if you show some reform, your life inside might get easier. The level six institution of the facility is a supermax site that accommodates death row convicts and offenders who pose more significant dangers to other offenders and prison employees. Apart from unhygienic conditions, overcrowding, and nasty food, apparently the guards are also on their worst behavior. The prison authorities were accused of exercising unwarranted pressure and lacking experience in controlling the inmates. Prisoners at PNM witnessed the most deadly prison riot in U.S. history. In 1980, inmates gained control of the whole institution and took 12 guards hostage. The men were dismembered, decapitated, and later hung up on the cells or burned alive. 33 inmates died in the riot. Today, the prison is rumored to be haunted. From hearing ghostly footsteps to whispers down the corridors, doors slamming shut, to unexplainable sightings of dead prisoners, this is one prison you never want to have to visit. 4. San Quentin San Quentin State Prison opened in 1854 and is the oldest prison in California. It's also one of the most famous in the world. The penitentiary is the state's only facility that conducts executions. The prison includes a gas chamber, though today executions are only done with lethal injection. Violence is a persistent concern at San Quentin even though it has many guards at every post. A specific instance happened in February 2006 when some racially driven assaults injured 100 convicts and killed two. The jail is also noted for its dire circumstances. A 2005 assessment stated that it is dangerous to house people in there. In 2006, an inmate on death row sliced a guard's arm to the bone while he was being uncuffed. San Quentin became one of the most frightful institutions on the West Coast. The prison has its own zip code and houses an enormous population of serious offenders. But brutality is not the only thing dealt with within these walls. A considerable portion of San Quentin's popularity is attributable to its prominent convicts who've already done time at the facility. This includes Charles Manson, the legendary Manson family leader who remained at San Quentin until he earned a relocation in the late 1980s. Stanley Tukey Williams was a commander of the Crips gang who stayed at San Quentin and was killed there in 2005. San Quentin is widely mentioned in countless movies, television series, music, and novels, and the institution will likely remain one of the most dangerous jails in the world for some time. 3. Bang Kwong There aren't many jails in the world that are as brutal as Bang Kwong Central Prison. Situated near the borders of Bangkok, Thailand, the institution is an overcrowded and underpaid maximum security jail that accommodates both local and international offenders. Constructed in the 1930s, this jail was initially designed to contain 3,500 convicts, but today holds more than 8,000, most of whom are serving terms as long as 25 years. About 10% of them are serving life and have shackles riveted to their legs. Shackles, in reality, are a sort of categorization here. New convicts must always wear them for the first three months at all times of the day. 
One meal with a plate of rice and soup is provided each day, and other food must be bought in the in-house cafeteria. Angela Carnegie, an American who served nine years in this jail for drug trafficking, said that the only food given to her was frequently infested with worms. Likewise, Judith Payne, another inmate, remembers the rat-infested flooring of Bong Quang and the first night of her confinement. Payne often witnessed guards whipping mentally sick and elderly convicts, and in one instance, she saw a pregnant lady experience the same treatment. Inmates are hungry and sometimes ill due to the absence of running water and the stench of the awful overflowing sewage system. The worst feature of the prison is how simple it is to be stuck there for years, even if it's not merited. U.S. native Jonathan Wheeler was convicted to Bang Kwong for importing narcotics and was sentenced to 50 years. Conversely, a local jailed for killing and slaughtering his wife was freed after just 11 years. In Wheeler's words, life is so cheap there that drug sentences are worse than murder. So the next time you consider visiting Thailand, make sure you don't find yourself in any criminal or illegal activity. The gates of this overcrowded jail are still open today and welcome anyone stupid enough to be locked up inside. 2. Vladimir Central Prison The Vladimir Central Jail sits in the historic city of Vladimir, east of Moscow. This is one of Russia's seven central jails, a cluster of solid brick complexes established over 200 years ago. Former prisoners complain of overcrowding and rampant sickness, but they claim something even more alarming is going on in Russia's correctional system. Accounts alleging severe maltreatment by jail personnel surfaced. Human rights organizations argue the treatment of convicts at certain prisons is intended to damage them mentally. A prisoner named Vladimir Gladkov states that the guard routinely torture their victims. Gladkov stated, They would force us from our cells, order us to spread our legs and put our hands against the wall, and then beat us with batons until we had to help drag each other back to our cells. Another former convict, Yuri Skokarev, claims that those who sought to report to the authorities would receive even harsher punishment. Human rights campaigner Lev Ponomaryov claims there are several torture prisons around Russia. During the last eight years, things have gotten so bad that some inmates are driven to suicide. Ponomaryov had presented a page-long letter. It was believed to be written with a prisoner's blood because he had no pen. The writer had appealed for assistance, stating he was frightened for his life. 1. Guantanamo Bay The Guantanamo Bay detention camp, also known as Gitmo, houses suspected terrorists captured by U.S. military forces in Iraq and Afghanistan. The prison is located on the southeastern coast of Cuba, where the U.S. leases land for its naval base under a treaty dating back over 100 years to the 1898 Spanish-American War. Cubans have protested U.S. presence on the island for years. Following the attacks on the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001, then-President George W. Bush launched his War on Terror. Following this attack, a military prison was established on Guantanamo Bay, intentionally outside of U.S. territory. Since 2002, some 780 detainees have been held at Gitmo. Since its opening, hundreds of prisoners have been held at Guantanamo, some without charge. Some are simply held on suspicion of their participation or connection to Islamic terrorist groups. According to former President Bush, the foreign detainees were not entitled to U.S. constitutional rights because they were being held outside of U.S. territory. Eleven prisoners have been held in Guantanamo for up to 16 years despite never having been charged with a crime. They have been dubbed the forever prisoners. The regular rules of the U.S. prison system don't apply in this highly guarded institution. Authorities can punish the inmates in any way they deem fit. There have been several appeals to close the center down, 
President Joe Biden has promised that the prison will be closed before he leaves office. Thanks for watching. Which one of these prisons do you think would be the worst one to be locked up in? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.